Hi, I'm Carla with Race to Walk, and today I'm going to be sharing with you my top five books for Christian apologetics. So before we get started, a little bit about this channel. On this channel, we talk about good thoughts, about good words, and on Tuesdays, I publish reviews about books, and on Friday, I do a Bible study on Instagram Live, and I later upload that to YouTube, and so you, if you're interested in that, you can like and subscribe so you can get notifications of when new videos are posted. So before we get started, we're going to first cover what apologetics is. So apologetics means it's a defense of something or a position. Most of the time when people hear that word, they think of Christian apologetics, but it can also be, you know, there's Star Wars apologists. Our school district has their own apologists for every bad decision that they make. But most of the time people refer referring to the Christian defense of the faith, um, evidences for God, as well as for the exclusivity of the Christian faith. So there are so, so, so many great resources out there in apologetics. Um, I could not even possibly begin to list them all. But if this is something that's new to you, what I've done is I've chosen five books that I think that are kind of a good starter. So, and they're, it's not a top five books overall, but it's five books in different types of apologetics. So if you're looking to start to, you know, expand your knowledge base and to get a little bit a better understanding and how you can give a defense for what you believe, then I think these five books are a good starting point. So the first one is going to be um, on just kind of an overview, general apologetics. This is uh, Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. This is a very old uh, copy edition. I think I probably got this at Half Price Books, but there's a lot of um, a lot of editions online. So in Mere Christianity, he goes over uh, defenses for the reasons for God, and then he also covers a very important part where he talks about sin. Because if you watch my review on the abolition of man, he was speaking out against relativism in that book. That's uh, you can get this. This is one of the current editions of the abolition of man. And that's the idea that truth is centered in ourselves. So what's right, what we choose to do is right for us, but it may not be right for somebody else. That's really a very damaging sort of uh, try to way to live. And this is, this he does cover that in this book, and I think that's very important, um, especially in today's society when we have, there's so many people that just think that truth is isn't centered in themselves and that they can have their own truth. So this, he also gives um, reasons for God, reasons for the Christian faith, why it's important. And then the third part of it is actually basically kind of the Christian life. So it's, it's kind of an introduction to Christianity almost. Now this was written, um, he actually, this started out as a radio talk. So um, if you don't know who C.S. Lewis is, he was a, a professor at Oxford. He was actually a medieval scholar. He was friends with J.R.R. Tolkien. They were in the, the Inklings, but he was kind of came to be a little bit more well known when he wrote the Screw Tape Letters. And then um, he also was a chaplain for the Royal Air Force while they were during World War II, while the Blitzkrieg was going on. And so he, these young men would go up, they had a very high mortality rate, and some of them would go out on missions, and a good percentage of them wouldn't come back. And so he would talk to them and just you know, encourage them and talk to them about God. So then the BBC approached him and asked him to give a series of, to of radio talks, and that is what um, what he talked about was in was eventually made into this book. So it was about why we believe what we believe, and you know the reason for the hope that is in us. And just imagine what that would have been like to be living during that time in London when all these. Um, you know, where they're in the middle of the war, they could go outside and see the devastation around them constantly, and they would sit there and listen to the radio and before they're going to bed, and they really wouldn't know whether they were going to be waking up the next day. So this is uh, this is a book that um, was formed out of the that talk, and if you go to the the apologetics category on Amazon, most of this most of the time you'll see this is the number one book in Christian apologetics. 
So this is a great, um, great place to start your apologetics library. Now the second one is, um, I wanted to have one that's on the resurrection because as, as Paul said, if Christ is not risen, our hope is in vain. Now, many of you have probably heard about this. This is A Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. It was actually uh, made into a movie. Um, I guess it's been two years ago now. But he was a he was an atheist, uh, he, and he was a journalist. And his wife became a Christian, and he was like, it just, they wouldn't have been able to kin continue. He says this in the book. He also says it in the, in the movie. Um, her faith and his lack of it, it would have eventually ended up tearing them apart if so he had to, you know, is this true or is this not? So this was his investigation into the resurrection for Christ. And he tell he is a journalist and he tells it like a story and I think it's very, very accessible. Now there is a ton, I mean a ton of resources out there uh, giving evidences for the resurrection going into you know ancient sources and you know explaining that if you're if you're interested in that there are there are other, a lot of other books out there now this is one of those books this is the resurrection of jesus by michael kona this is 700 pages and this is actually his dissertation so if you want to get into the nitty-gritty and details yeah you can get this book but if you want to read a story about a, kind of an overview of all of these things and something that is it's an engaging book I think um, this is a this is a good place to start about um, the evidences for the resurrection so now in the back he has a really good resource and in, in the uh, his list of citations and he gives you know if you want to go and explore any one of these things that he mentions you, he does cite the sources that you can go and look that up so the next one that I have, I wanted to do one about science and faith because sometimes people think that science is in opposition to faith and it was hard because there's a lot of, there again, there are a lot of great resources out there in different aspects, and, but the one that I chose is The Language of God by Francis Collins and the, he is actually, um, he's the head of the Human Genome, Pro, the Human Genome Project and he explored DNA and he, what I really like about this book is not only does he get into the nitty-gritty about just how magnificently we are I mean we are as human beings are works of art but he also gives kind of an account of his testimony and he does uh, push back against some of the arguments against faith that sometimes come up in science so I think this is a really again it's a really good book to start um, but this is, this is, I'm just going to read a little bit, a little portion of it. So he's talking about the argument that God is just wish fulfillment. But, so this is on page 38 in this edition of the book. Finally, in, lo in simple logical terms, if one allows the possibility that God is something humans might wish for, does that rule out the possibility that God is real? Absolutely not. The fact that I have wished for a loving wife does not make now make her imaginary. The fact that the farmer wishes wish for rain does not make him question the reality of the subsequent downpour. In fact, one can turn this wishful thinking argument on its head. Why would such a universal and uniquely human hunger exist if it were not connected to some opportunity for fulfillment? Again, Lewis says it well. Everybody quotes C.S. So Lewis in Apologetics. But he, Lewis writes, Creatures are not born with desires unless satisfaction for those desires exists. A baby feels hunger. Well, there is such a thing as food. A duckling wants to swim. Well, there is such a thing as water. Men feel sexual desire. Well, there is such a thing as sex. If I find in myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. And then Collins continues, could it be that this longing for the sacred, a universal and puzzling aspect of, of human experience, may not be wish fulfillment, but rather a pointer towards something beyond us? Why do we have a God-shaped vacuum in our hearts and minds unless it is meant to be filled? And so that's from his, um, his introduction. So I think that this is a, again, I think this is a good start starter for um, exploring you know, the, 
the area of science and faith and again there's so many so many more out there I might do another another video just on different good resources for that so the next one that I chose is on the philosophical arguments and this one is actually by someone who Lee Strobel interviewed and mentions in his book and that's William Lane Craig he is a, a Christian philosopher and he this is his book on guard now this is considered one of his more accessible books um, he gives just basically some basic philosophical arguments for God like the ontological argument he has the uh, he's known for the Kalam cosmological argument and then he also um, talks about you know the problem of evil and the exclusivity of the Christian faith so if you are just beginning to get into more of the philosophical aspect of apologetics I think that this is a, a good beginning I mean it's not an easy read it's not okay so I'm not saying it's a hard read but it's not like reading you know a novel you, your mind is gonna have to engage a, l a little bit but I do think that it's a good start and one of uh, my friends in the apologetics program or the graduated from the apologetics program so that she takes teens and college students through this book and so this is a um, this is a good a good place to start um, and then the last category that I chose was one on cultural apologetics and you may not have and if you go again if you go to the apologetics cat, uh, category on Amazon pretty much all of them are going to be about propositional arguments reasons cultural apologetics is different and it is about taking the stories and these um, narratives that we see in the culture around us and explaining how the things that we love in in those stories reflects the character or nature or, or some aspect of God's truth this is we're all familiar with it but we don't or you would if we told you like certain stories that illustrate God's truth you would you're familiar with those stories but people aren't as familiar with this as an area of apologetics now this is actually what I got my degree in it was cultural apologetics this book is by its apologetics and the Christian imagination an integrated approach to defending the faith this is written by dr. Holly Ordway who is one of the um, one of the founding professors in the cultural apologetics program at Houston Baptist University so she kind of gives a reason for like why it's important um, and I'm going to read a, a part of this this is from page 14 and 15 in the book and she quotes from um, from Austin Ferrer he said the work of apologetics does not stand on its own but rather cultivates an environment in which belief can develop though argument does not create conviction the lack of it destroys belief what can seems to be proved may not be embraced but what no one shows the ability to defend is quickly abandoned rational argument does not create belief but it maintains a climate in which belief may flourish I would add to Ferrer's point in this way we need above all to cultivate an environment in which belief is both reasonable and meaningful now I'm gonna stop here because I want to read a little bit more but I want to um, now some of the people that I went to through the apologetics program with we started a journal in April of 2018 and it's a quarterly journal and it's on cultural apologetics so this is the first six issues of the journal we just published number seven on um, dystopia stories we just published number seven on dystopian stories I don't have the hard copy of that but that's what we cover in here and specifically what she's talking about in um, that I just mentioned that you have to have an uh, cultivate environment for belief we talk about that in our spring 2019 issue on imagination actually my essay on this on faith and imagination and how we have to have um, imagination to be able to have faith that is that is the whole topic of this issue here but uh, let me continue so then she continues to write when people lack imaginative engagement with faith which may include a deficit of real meaning for the words and ideas that we use or a failure to see that these ideas are important or interesting their belief or potential belief is not so much destroyed as starved 
Rational argument helps to remove the stones and choking weeds from the field we seek to cultivate, but without imagination, the soil is dry and hard and the seeds are easily scorched or blown away. Culturally, we are, as it were, in drought conditions for the sowing of the word. Here we turn from considering apologetics, broadly speaking, to, more, to the more specific topic of what we will call imaginative apologetics. Both reason and imagination are modes of communicating and encountering truth. Imaginative apologetics seeks to harness the God-given faculty of imagination to work in cooperation with reason, to open a way for the work of the Holy Spirit and guide the will toward a commitment to Christ. So this is a... Um, it's a really good explanation of what cultural apologetics is. There's another book that just came out a few months ago called Cultural Apologetics by Paul Gould. I think um, there's another one coming out in like a month or two called Narrative Apologetics. So it's not that it's unfamiliar, but people don't necessarily recognize what that is. And so we have um, in our journal, we have a lot of um, illustrations of explaining how some of these stories that we love illustrate God's truth. There's, it's true about in all of our issues of the journal, but it's especially true in this one. This was in fall 2018. It's Courage, Strength, and Hope. Um, it talks about a lot of our popular stories and, and how they illustrate God's truth. One of those that I wrote, wrote in there was actually on um, Lava, the Pixar short, which I, I love. I think it's great, but um, and then this one is was on our summer of 2019, and it was on film and music. So this is I, I this is I love this one. This is just so amazing. We have an essay on uh, 21 Pilots, how you know that has really connected to you know the younger generations and you, that are seeking for, for meaning. Um, we have another essay on Vision and Virtue and Harry Potter. So uh, on Narnia, on The Watchmen, um, we have one on a horror film called The Witch, um, and then the one that I wrote is actually on the movie Serenity, which if you don't know, this he was actually uh, produced by Josh Wheaton, who is an atheist. But the in the essay, I talk about how he illustrates the point that both Lewis and uh, Alvin Plantiga, who came up with the free will defense in The Problem of Evil, uh, how he illust illustrates that in his story. So, you know, the thing is that everyone is searching, you know, we have so many people who are searching for me meaning and people, there's all these stories out there, but what is it in these stories? Why do we love these stories? What is, what is the good and the true and the beautiful in these stories? And how does that illustrate the, the truth and the beauty of God. So those are my um, my top five. And like I said, there may be some, if you're just starting to get into apologetics, there may be certain areas that you are more interested in. Maybe you're really drawn to the science. Maybe you're really like looking at the, the manuscript evidence of the gospels, or maybe you like looking at the, the archeological evidence. Um, I had one of the, one of my friends from the program said, you know, she's, she's read some of the propositional arguments and she said it really kind of left me cold, but she loves the cultural apologetics. She loves those thoughts and ideas. And so whatever, whatever God's put in you that you connect, that you really connect with, then just go with that. Now, Every single one of us is really a cultural apologist when we tell our own testimony about how we came to faith and what Jesus has done for us. We're telling our own story of how he has worked in our life. So regardless of who you are, if you are, if you have made Jesus the Lord of our life, it's up to each one of us. We always have to be, Paul says, always be ready to give a reason for the hope that is within you to anyone who asks. But we have to be ready to do that. And so you don't have to know every single argument for God. You just have to be willing to be used by God. And so if you want to be someone who can um, be part of people's story and their journey to coming to Christ, then just tell God, you know, just pray and say, God, you know what, I'm here and I'm ready to be used however you want to use me. And then watch for the opportunities. And he he will create opportunities for you to to witness and to give your testimony so just watch for it 
and like I said, you know, the first, everybody has their own story. But what I've noticed is that as you learn more and you become better equipped, God will open more doors and he'll use you in other ways. So you, again, you don't have to have all of these, know all the arguments, but the more equipped you are, the more in different ways that God will use you. And that's exciting, don't you think? So anyway, if you've read any of these books, let me know. If you've, there's a book that's really made a, a difference in your life, then I'd really like to hear about it. So put it, uh, just make a comment and thanks for watching.